Hi there everyone, it's Neil here, also known as The Wax Whisperer. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, I'm a UK trained and qualified consultant audiologist and also a clinical ear care specialist who specialises in the diagnosis, treatment and rehabilitation of people suffering from hearing problems and also balance problems. So what we have here is a gentleman um, who has compacted wax in both ears and this here is actually the left ear. You can see the consistency of the wax is almost like clay and it's one of the hardest types of earwax to actually remove because it's very difficult to suction this type of earwax. You can compare it to clay as I said also wet mud and because of the, the viscosity of the wax it's very hard to obtain a suction grip and quite often this type of wax actually blocks the suction probe and during uh, this procedure you'll see many times that I've had to come out of the ear and bl unblock the suction probe um, using a, a cleaning rod. So this wax um, is also adhered to some skin that's also attached to the ear canal ball and currently we're quite lateral uh, laterally in the ear which is the outer part of the ear canal near the entrance and I'm making some headway here um, I'm actually working on the posterior canal wall where the wax was attached to gently peeling it and here I've now gone to the inferior and anterior canal wall it is a bit of a struggle and in a moment um, you will see that here we are I've instilled some olive oil earwax drops now what olive oil does it does two things not only does it soften the wax, but it also helps to bind the wax together. So when you do get a suction grip, you get larger chunks of the wax coming out. I always compare it to an egg. If you're making potato cake or fish cake, it binds the mixture together. And similarly, in this case, uh, with earwax, it has a similar effect. So it has given me some benefit here, but nonetheless, it is still very difficult to remove this wax. There are other... ENT micro instruments that you kind of think well why aren't you not using that well you can't use crocodile forceps with this because the wax is just too soft it's not going to get any grip or purchase and now that I'm further in the ear we just don't know what's behind that wax so if I insert a uh, Jobson horn for example there's no opening there for me to get the instrument in and behind the wax and I could make contact with the bony part of the canal wall because we're so deep now or in fact the tympanic membrane which is a medical term for the eardrum. Hence why I'm persisting with a suction probe. Uh, when wax is really really deep in the ear which is where we are now it's always safer to use a suction probe so you, you're minimizing any, any risk and trauma caused by the instrument to the client. So. Um, just in the distance there I can begin to see the eardrum but um, the wax itself is actually impacted onto the eardrum and soon enough that will be revealed. There is a lot of hair in the, the patient's ear now I wouldn't say this is cilia so most people have what we call cilia which is a little hair strands located in the outer part of the ear canal and the function of the cilia is almost just to trap any particles, foreign body, foreign bodies for example pollen entering the ear so it almost filtrates the air but I've got a feeling here this hair is actually the client's own hair which may be on his scalp um, or of his beard so one piece of advice I can provide is if you do shave um, any hair close to your ear I would get a ball of cotton wool with some Vaseline around it and just insert it into the ear canal just at the entrance you don't want to go too far because you do have to remove that cotton ball and what this does if you are shaving or trimming your beard and you've got strands of hair that are flying around they don't enter deep in the ear the problem with hair is that when it does enter the ears uh, as this gentleman has it does mat alongside the earwax and it prevents the natural migration of wax so that's just a bit of a tip for anyone who is um, often trimming their beard hair or shaving their scalp and you've got hairs flying around everywhere so you can now see the eardrum there although it's not very distinct you can't really recognize all the landmarks and that's just because you've got wax smeared all over the eardrum when we go near to the eardrum um, 
we generally use what we call a fine end. Um, so a fine end is almost like an extension that we attach to the standard Zollner suction probe. The benefits of a, a, Zollner, um, a fine end gourd, sorry, is that it's less atraumatic. So if you do come in contact with the eardrum, which is way for thin, so we, we have to be very, very careful here, um, it's less likely to cause permanent damage. And also another benefit of a fine end gourd is that Although the suction power is reduced, so is the noise. For anyone that's undergone this procedure before, they, they, they do realise and appreciate it can be quite noisy, especially as we slowly remove the layers of earwax. So a fine end can be a bit more time consuming because you don't have that surface area to grab large chunks of wax, but you do have to use it when we go this close to the eardrum. So the part of the eardrum that I'm working on at the moment is what we call the anterior aspect. So it's the front part. It's, it's the part, so if you were to see the client, this part of the eardrum is further towards his nose as opposed to the back of the head. And I'm just quite literally making contact with the eardrum here. I'm trying to kiss the surface and just loosen as much of this soft wax as I possibly can. Again, it's more difficult because of these um, hair strands. Um, you can actually see the top part of the eardrum is slightly moving there, so I am making contact. Believe it or not, it's people tolerate this very, very well. So unless you really go in like a dagger and put ex excessive force, clients do tolerate um, when we do approach the eardrum and make contact. So we have got a very good view here as well. Um, one of the benefits of an endoscope, which is what I use, and this particular endoscope is called the iClearscope. It's something that I developed alongside my colleagues at Clearwax is the field of view. Um, some, some specialists use head loops or uh, a microscope. Now in the case of a microscope you get fantastic magnification but the view itself is very narrow. You don't see the whole ear canal. The field of view is much narrower. So therefore with an endoscope not only are we able to achieve the correct magnification that we require to see the eardrum this close up, but we can also see the entire eardrum in one shot, which is so beneficial and useful. One of the negatives of an endoscope is that you do lose some depth perception compared to a microscope, and that's because a microscope you're using two eyes, you're getting what we call binocular or stereoscopic vision. With this with the eye clear scope, we're actually viewing on the iPod uh, monitor, so it's a 2D view. However, that doesn't mean you still can't develop depth perception over time and experience, because you can see the entire ear canal. You can recognise certain landmarks of the ear canal itself, and using those different landmarks, you can then ascertain the depth. Obviously, the further in you go with the endoscope, you also do get that depth perception and you can use shadows that are created within the ear because of the anatomy, the bends and twists of the ear canal to kind of really precisely know how far you are um, in the ear canal. So um, going back to uh, this particular patient, um, I'm still working very closely and carefully on the eardrum. Um, you can see the posterior part of the eardrum which is the back part there. You can see the blue tinge and that, that is the eardrum so it's, I'm slowly am uh, revealing more and more. There is some wax inferiorly, so at the bottom part of the eardrum, there's a little trench there called the inferior recess. And I believe uh, further on in the video, I'm going to just put some more drops in just to loosen that. But from where we began, I'm quite happy with that because you, I can visualize uh, the whole eardrum. Yes, that soft remaining sticky wax can have some impact on the client's hearing, but uh, very minimal. And over time, that soft sticky wax will actually dry up naturally. And the skin that actually not only coats the eardrum, but also the ear canal, as it sheds, it's almost like a snake skin. It sheds and then it kind of migrates outwards. And it's the same with the ear. So in time, this remaining bit of wax would actually naturally migrate. However, with this particular client who's tolerating the procedure very well indeed, I felt safe, I felt confident, so I decided just to persist a bit more, see if I can get a bit more out. Other clients, however, you may have the opposite. You just feel that they're not tolerating the procedure as well because although it is, it, as I said earlier, most people do tolerate this when we do go um, very deep in the ear, some clients are more sensitive than others and you're just going to select your client really and that comes with experience.
Also, what's great with the eye clear scope, going back to this technology, is that you can always have one eye on the patient as well. So I'm looking for a, the corner of my eye for sudden movements of the patient, any signs of dis discomfort or distress, which enables me to, to know when to stop. Um, historically, uh, the use of an endoscope, you have a separate viewing monitor away from the client. So you're not having one eye on the client and both eyes are facing away. If you think about a lot of surgery that's performed using an endoscope, um, the, the surgeon themselves are not looking uh, at the patient, they're looking on a viewing monitor on the, on the wall of the operating um, theatre. So again, um, I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, we do have to be very careful, not only to um, make contact with the eardrum, although, as I said, most patients do tolerate it. Where the real discomfort comes from is if we make contact with the, the ear canal wall itself. So the medial part of the ear canal it's literally skin on bone. There's, there's no fatty tissue there, kind of almost protecting um, the ear canal. Whereas more laterally, the outer third, you, it's, the ear canal itself is made up of cartilage, so you can apply a bit more pressure. So the real risk here is not causing pain by touching the eardrum, so to speak. Although, as I said, if you're going like a dart and a dagger, it, it, that will, will obviously naturally be uncomfortable. It's making contact with the side ear canal wall, and that's why Quite often in my procedures, you'll see when we've got whacked very medially, I try and resist the temptation of using a St. Bart's ear hook or Jobson horn, where quite typically you do have to make contact with the ear canal wall to remove the wax. So we finished with the left ear, I was very happy with that. The client themselves also felt that, that, that all their symptoms um, associated with the ear wax were resolved. So I'm now switched over to the right ear. And again, this wax is very sticky and very clay type. There is a bit of a gap there. The ear canal itself is also quite narrow. It's more what we call oblong. Um, it's, it's not round like a football. It's more like an oval shape. Um, but the, the saving grace is that the wax is a bit more, at this stage anyway, a bit more lateral, so nearer to the ear canal, the cartilage portion of the ear canal. Again, you can see um, some cilia there, which is slightly obscure in the view, and also some other hair um, that's matted. I'm wriggling around here, I'm trying to loosen this wax from the ear canal wall, so there's a few skin adhesions and you can see I've got a big piece of wax here. It's not as sticky and clay, clay type as the left ear, hence why I was able to remove all this wax in one solid lump. That wax was more kind of stuck and binded together and at the end the eardrum was nice and healthy. So. Thanks again for watching, uh, if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, please do um, subscribe and select uh, and click the notification bell so you'll be alerted as and when I upload uh, more videos. So again, thanks for watching and uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're keeping well and safe. Thank you. Bye.